So today what you will see on the screen is exactly what will have happened today. The only difference is that there is a camera, so we can see it here. Uh, we have two patients ready, but you will see only one today. Uh, the patient that we uh, will present today is uh, Luis. Uh, his uh, chief complaint is, I can't adapt to my overdenture. Uh, and this is a patient that we treated um, uh, some time ago uh, with four implants for a, an overdenture. Now we uh, encounter some complications with the two anterior implants. Uh, you will see that a little bit later, so that prognosis are a little bit questionable. So what we decided is to transform this case into a full fixed rehabilitation. And the way we uh, prepare the case is we took a digital impression, as you can see here, with the scan bodies, uh, in order to um, prepare a tooth setup. And this was done in a model that we printed out from that impression. And you can see here now we are using the existing implants, and that will become a key element of the whole process because the existing implant will be the repositioning elements for uh, most of the devices that we will use today. So this is a screw retain functional wax up try in. We are now uh, sitting this uh, uh, device in the patient's mouth. We are assessing the uh, lip support, the adaptation. This will be a fixed uh, conventional case. Uh, and you can see now when you see the reach here why the patient may have had some uh, difficulties adjusting with the prosthesis because you know, he has a very voluminous reach in the uh, uh, maxillary arch. So we check also in the lateral view, as you can see here. And this is uh, uh, something that we would like to do digital, but for the moment we can only do it in an analog way. So you can see the profile. So basically, we, we test that beforehand that the feasibility of the uh, fixed prosthesis is, is possible. So here we are. Now, this is the interesting part. Once this setup has been confirmed with the patient and with the clinical team, what we did is we transformed that setup into a radiographic template, into a screw retain radiographic template, right? So this is simply a duplication and radiopaque material of that template. So now we are going to go with that device, take a combin CT for the patient. You can see here now with all the copings being picked up. And now this device sits in place. We are going to attach that device into a, um, a, a instrument that will allow us to uh, um, reposition that with the Combin CT. This will be a lab-based uh, fabricated guide. And, and that um, um, key there has three uh, pins that they will allow us later on to reposition the elements. And this is the, the Combin CT. And you can see here, if I can show you on the screen, uh, that the two implants, you can, you can notice there the bone loss. So the plan for today is as follows. With that guy, Dr. Rousson will place two additional implants in the central incisor area and two additional implants in the first molar area with the intention of later on removing the implants on 7 and 10. Mm -hmm. uh, the, these implants, we think they cannot stay uh, in, in the patient's uh, mouth. What you will see is that due to the uh, uh, large size of the ridge, Dr. Rousson will attempt to do the case flapless. And this is a great benefit for these patients. And then we will try to do on the upper right, uh, position number three, and transalveolar sinus augmentation, all that in the next hour. So, uh, I, yes, it sounds uh, like an optimistic plan, but uh, uh, here you see the planning side by side. Uh, you can see the two implants in the anterior, a very favorable condition here. The same on the back. The same on uh, number eight. And, and this is what you have here as a planning. 
uh, and this is what comes from the uh, uh, um, software that we use. So this is the surgical protocol. For each implant, there is a specific set of drills that you will need to follow in order to achieve the uh, correct position. Now, then after that, the guide is fabricated uh, based on that planning that you just saw here. Mm -hmm. and, and as I said, this guide is uh, fabricated on, uh, in the laboratory. Uh, and now we are able to deliver to this patient a, a screw retain guide, surgical guide, that will allow us to uh, place the implant through those leaves. As you can see, uh, the uh, uh, amount of keratinized mucosa and the amount of bone, it's a uh, uh, very um, 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 uh, interesting and, and optimal for, for a flapless approach. And I just want to make a side note. In our program, program about 30% of the patient only, 30% of the patient, they get the flapless approach. It's a great thing for the patient. It reduces the chair side time, but it's not for every patient. And we do it in cases where you have three conditions. And if you want to take note of that, I will give you some time. Condition number one, you need to use a guided system. Even if you're an experienced, experienced clinician yeah, and you have a lot of bone, you can go uh, off center. Second, you need to have at least one millimeter and a half to two of native bone in your software planning, buccal and lingual of the implant. So you can offset any, compens any uh, misplacement in there. And third, you need to have at least three millimeters of keratinized mucosa from the most buccal aspect of your sleeve. Because if you don't have enough keratinized mucosa, and this is common in the lower arch, and you punch that mucosa away, then the implant will sit without the surrounding keratinized mucosa. So if you have these three elements, which is in about 30% of the cases, we go flapless, and the patients are really uh, uh, very comfortable after the implant placement. You see here, this is a, a lateral view uh, and a frontal view of the case. And, and exactly what I was saying, we have enough keratinized mucosa on the buckle to do this case flapless. Now, I have spoken a lot. This is uh, about our team in Boston. And I will now do the magic words and see if, uh, if the image comes up. Can we have the Boston team on screen, please? Are you guys ready? Should be Dr. Rousson saying good morning or bonjour, I don't know. Yes, good morning, everybody in Orlando. Uh, can you hear well?